Assalamu alaikum. This is uh, in response to Summer Voyager. I normally don't respond to videos I see of people proselytizing their religion, but I had told you that I was going to respond to you um, when you make a video proving that Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, as the Christians perceive him, is the one who is uh, prophesied in the Old Testament using Old Testament and New Testament sources. So what I'm going to do is address the Old Testament sources and because um, I mean what I believe is the New Testament writers just went back to the Old Testament and uh, tried to draw parallels or try to make parallels. So I'm just going to address the Old Testament. Now one of such um, quotations that we have is Micah chapter 5 verse 2 which says but you O Bethlehem Ephrathah uh, you are too little to be among the clans of Judah from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel whose origin is from old from ancient days now you claim that this is actually a prophecy about Jesus but there is nothing in the records that describe Jesus that calls him uh, a soldier and a ruler because when we go to the same chapter the first verse of that chapter now muster your troops O daughter of, of troops siege is laid against us with a rod they strike the judge of Israel on the cheek. So this is talking about uh, a ruler who is going to sort of be a soldier, lead troops to defeat the enemy. Because as we see in the same Micah 5 verse 6, it says, They shall shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod at his entrances and he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads within our border I do not recall any records of Jesus fulfilling this except only that verse 2 um, applies to Jesus and the rest of it is false prophecy I'll go on to the next Then next you go on to Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 which says I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him well Jesus to Christians is not a prophet he is God the son of God who is God himself now, if Jesus was God, or the Son of God, or however you want to describe it, God says in Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18, that I will put my words in his mouth. Why does God have to put his words in the mouth of Jesus if Jesus was God? He knows everything. He does not need God to tell him what to say because he himself is supposed to be God. Deuteronomy 18.18 18 does not describe Jesus as far as the Christian theology, uh, Christian theology uh, refers to him as God. This is uh, not a really good connection because if Jesus was God he would not need God to put his words in his mouth we'll go on to the next now she also quotes from Psalms this is chapter 2 verse 7 and it's supposed to be sorry verse 6 actually as for me I have set my king on Zion my holy hill 
if you read this in context it is actually referring to uh, David as the king because in verse 7 it says I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me now this is what the Lord said you are my son today I have begotten you ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage this is in verse 8 actually and the ends of your of the earth your possession now in 9 you shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel nothing here says anything about Jesus this was actually in reference to David verse 6 chapter 2 of Psalms as for me I have set my king on Zion my holy hill there's nothing that sounds like Jesus here it's simply speaking uh, in reference to the animosity that the enemies around Israel had for Israel and he had made David the king she goes on to quote from Isaiah um, Isaiah 49 verse 7 and um, this will actually never make any sense <laughs> if you're going to just read Isaiah 49 verse 7 and to never make sense so you, you need to read in context actually the heading of chapter 49 says the servant of the Lord now the servant of the Lord I don't know how it can be the Lord himself but um, it starts with listen to me O coastlands and give attention you peoples from afar this is the writer of Isaiah speaking and he also says the Lord called me from the womb from the body of my mother he named my name so this is the speaker of Isaiah speaking to the people verse 2 he made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand he hid me he he made me a polished arrow he, uh, in his quiver he hid me away now verse 3 says and he said to me so speaking about God in the first three verses or first two verses and this is what God said you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified so this is actually painting a discourse between God and Israel all right when we go to the verse 7 that she quotes thus says the Lord the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One to the deeply despised abhorred by the nation the servant of rulers that okay now this continues as what well, this is what God says kings shall see and arise princes and they shall prostrate themselves because uh, the Lord because of the Lord who is faithful the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you so this basically is a discourse between whoever is called Israel in the Old Testament which I know is not Jesus and God and this person is despised this person actually is a servant of God who's despised by the nation but God will make him rise above all of the tribulation and he shall become somebody who is favored by kings and princes this nowhere know how resembles Jesus as far as I'm concerned this is speaking about a person who is a servant and who is named Israel according to uh, the Old Testament maybe that's Isaac or whoever it is or Jacob I have no idea now it's almost 10 minutes I'm gonna stop here and I will definitely continue with the rest of the video inshallah 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.